The Republican presidential caucuses in Iowa were history today after Mitt Romney's record close win over Rick Santorum. The outcome reduced the field by one, but most of the candidates began moving from the Midwest to New England for the New Hampshire primary. Hours after the Iowa results were finally official, Romney, the former Massachusetts governor, returned to his backyard. Wow, what a uh, big night we had last night, or what, what a big morning we had uh, last morning, this morning in, uh, in Iowa. My goodness, what a squeaker. But it sure is nice to have a win, I'll tell you. And the question I have for you is, can we do better here in New Hampshire? Can we? Yeah, yeah. Romney was already the strong favorite in New Hampshire, and to bolster his position, he turned to Arizona Senator John McCain, the man who bested him there four much, years ago. Thank you. It's with some nostalgia that I return to this place that I love so well, but I am really here for one reason and one reason only, and that is to make sure that we make Mitt Romney the next president of the United States of America and New Hampshire and New Hampshire is a state that will catapult him on to victory in a very short period of time. Hey, thank you very much. I appreciate it. To do that, Romney will have to top a new competitor in the Granite State, John Huntsman, who has chosen to make this his first contest. As Huntsman joins the fray, Michelle Bachman leaves it. The Minnesota Congresswoman was once favored in Iowa after winning the straw poll there in August. Thank you everyone for being here. I appreciate but she it. finished sixth Michelle. last Our night, job. and this morning in Des Moines, she suspended her campaign. So last night, the people of Iowa spoke with a very clear voice, and so I have decided to stand aside. And I believe that we must rally around the person that our country and our party and our people select to be that standard bearer. Texas Governor Rick Perry also flirted with dropping out after his fifth place showing. With the voters' decision tonight in, uh, in Iowa, uh, I've decided to return to Texas, assess the results of, of tonight's caucus, determine whether there is a path forward for myself in this race. But this morning, he indicated he was back in the race. Perry tweeted a photo of himself in running gear with the text, the next leg of the marathon is the Palmetto State. Here we come, South Carolina. Game on. Rick Santorum hoped to pick up social conservatives who had backed Bachman and Perry as he celebrated his near win in Iowa last night. The message I shared with you tonight is not an Iowa message or an Iowa and South Carolina message. It is a message that will resonate across this land. It's a resonate, it will resonate, I know, in New Hampshire, because you think I've been in Iowa a lot. <laughs> I've been to New Hampshire 30 times. The former Pennsylvania times. senator well, planned to pick up Johnson campaigning in New Hampshire that. tonight. The third place finisher in Iowa, Texas Congressman Ron Paul, also planned to campaign in New Hampshire after taking today off. So did Newt Gingrich, who saw a double-digit lead in Iowa evaporate this winter. He finished fourth after a barrage of negative ads that he blamed on Romney. Gingrich was still smarting as he arrived in New Hampshire early this morning. And on MSNBC, he made clear he's going after Romney. Even here, I predict you'll, you'll see him slide. Uh, by the time he gets to South Carolina and Florida, it'll be obvious, this is not a conservative Republican. He is not going to win the nomination. Uh, and, and he is not the most electable candidate. He's simply the guy the news media likes to talk about. Romney, in turn, acknowledged the Gingrich criticism on ABC. He's disappointed in the results uh, last night. but. I expect he'll go on and, and uh, uh, mount a, a spirited campaign, and you know we'll look forward to seeing him in the uh, in the in the states ahead. Uh, look, I, I I have pretty broad shoulders. I, I know the attacks are going to come; they're going to become more fast and furious now. And uh, if you can't handle the heat now, you certainly can't handle the heat down the road. Meanwhile, President Obama stepped up his own campaign today with an appearance in a critical swing state. Hello, Ohio. The president's aides predicted it could be some time before Republicans settle on a challenger for November. For now, the Republican hopefuls face the immediate test of two debates between now and next Tuesday's New Hampshire primary. 
For the latest, we turn to our own Gwen Ifill, who was with Mitt Romney in Manchester today, and Jeremy Peters of the New York Times, who has been covering Rick Santorum's campaign. Gwen, I'm going to turn to you first. You were covering uh, Senator Governor Romney uh, when he received the endorsement of John McCain. Tell us about the event. Well, it was kind of interesting because if you were here four years ago or even eight years ago when John McCain ran for president, he and Romney weren't exactly on the same side of this. Matter of fact, they were regularly attacking each other as flip-floppers. But today they were best friends forever. And you saw Romney standing up there and embracing John McCain. John McCain actually dressed almost the same as he used to always dress at campaign events here in New Hampshire. But, of course, he said he's only here to help defeat President Obama, who, of course, is the man who beat John McCain. The key here is that John McCain always did well in the north and the west parts of New Hampshire. And Mitt Romney, of course, used to be governor of Massachusetts, always did well in the southeast. And if you can get that support together, it'll, you know, give him the deal, even though uh, Mitt Romney's quite far ahead in the polls so far. And frankly, it's really the event itself wasn't all that. It was a lot of people in the room, a lot of school kids who came up from the high school cafeteria, and there wasn't a lot of enthusiasm. There was kind of a, some weak applause from time to time. It was, it was an odd for a campaign launch event in New Hampshire post-Iowa. Well, Gwen, as you say, uh, Mitt Romney does have uh, already the lead in the polls in New Hampshire. So how much of a bounce do his people think he gets out of this photo finish win in Iowa? Well, winning even tight is better than a poke in the eye with a stick. So they're happy to have won in New Hampshire, in Iowa, but it's unclear whether that translates to New Hampshire. Mike Huckabee won in Iowa pretty decisively four years ago. He came here to New Hampshire and barely got 11 percent of the vote and was very quickly out of the contest. So, and in fact, no non-incumbent Republican, someone who wasn't already president, has ever won both Iowa and New Hampshire. So it's unclear that Iowa really, really helps when it comes to New Hampshire. I was talking to Senator Kelly Ayotte here today in New Hampshire, who's a Republican rising star freshman here. And she said, well, that's nice that we won. It's better than losing in Iowa, but it doesn't really matter to us here. Well, let's talk about Rick Santorum. Uh, Jeremy Peters, you've been following him around, uh, we're following him around in Iowa. How was he able to connect with voters so quickly there at the end? Well, I think it was just a matter of voters looking around and being tired of all of the other candidates and seeing them implode one by one and finally settling on the one guy who A, didn't have a lot of baggage and B, had spent a lot of time in their state getting to know very Iowa-specific issues. And, and what sort of voters, I mean, how would you describe the Republicans and Independents and others who voted for Rick Santorum? Well, it was really a broad spectrum, and that's what struck me when I was out on the trail interviewing people and asking them why they supported Senator Santorum. On the one hand, you have uh, what you would expect, a lot of evangelical Christian voters, a lot of social conservatives. But what surprised me were the number of white-collar conservatives who said that they were supporting him. And, and often it were, uh, th these were voters who had decided that Newt Gingrich had too much personal baggage, that Perry had been problematic in the debates, and that Michelle Bachman they just couldn't go along with. So they had kind of gone through the process of elimination and settled on Rick Santorum. Uh, and, and there were also a number of people who, interestingly enough, said they were trying to choose between Mitt Romney and Rick Santorum, which is, is, is quite a, there's quite a lot of distance between the two of them on, on, on social issues uh, and a number of other things. So that was, it was very surprising. I think that a lot of people were trying to decide um, who they wanted to be the not Mitt Romney candidate, and they settled with Rick Santorum. So, Gwen, how worried are the Romney people about Santorum? Not terribly yet. I talked to a senior Romney advisor today and just put that very question to him, and he said, well, he thinks that Rick Santorum can do reasonably well in, in New Hampshire. Santorum himself points out he's already been here campaigning 30 times, more times than uh, almost as many times as John Huntsman, who's basically taken up residence in the state as New Hampshire is his last stand. So they expect uh, Rick Santorum can do well here with the 
blue-collar crowd, of which there's a significant Republican vote. They also suspect he can do here well with Catholics. He is, of course, a Catholic and very, very evangelical in, that, in his Catholicism, but also there's a great Catholic um, population here, especially in urban areas here in New Hampshire, who could be helpful to Rick Santorum. But, uh, but Mitt Romney has a big, big edge here, and it's only one week, and it takes a lot of money to outrun somebody who's raised as much money and gotten as much support and has run here before, like Mitt Romney. And with that in mind, Jeremy Peters, how much money does Rick Santorum have? What does he have in the way of infrastructure? He keeps saying he's been to New Hampshire a lot. Uh, what does he really have there on the ground? Uh, he has a campaign headquarters that's very thinly staffed. I mean, they re rely on a lot of volunteers. Um, but he doesn't have much in the way of an infrastructure, and he, that is going to be his biggest challenge going forward, building a national campaign infrastructure should he advance that far. And right now, it's almost impossible to see how he does that at his current fundraising levels. So, Gwen, if, if there's a limit to how worried the Romney people are about Santorum, what about the other candidates, John Huntsman, whom they haven't faced with the voters yet, they faced him in debates. What do they say about him and the rest of the lot? Well, if you look at the tracking polls that have been keeping track of what's happening to people over time, John Huntsman's creeping it very slowly, but he's still not anywhere near to Mitt Romney's strength in the state. So they're not as worried as they might otherwise be about him unless he has something he's about to unleash. Newt Gingrich has made clear he has a lot that he wants to unleash on Mitt Romney this week. So I, they're keeping a very clear eye on him as well. But when asked about it, as, as we heard in our piece, Mitt Romney basically says, oh, you know, Newt is such an angry man. I hope he gets over that and tries and pretends to let it kind of fall away. Uh, they're, they're perfectly happy to lose Michelle Bachman, who wasn't really taking that much away from them, probably not as happy that Rick Perry decided to stay. And Jeremy Peters, what about the, the themes, the message that, that Rick Santorum takes with him to New Hampshire? Do we expect to hear the same things he was saying in Iowa, which, which frankly many people have not even heard yet? Right. Well, and that is one of the major problems for Rick Santorum going forward, because most people do not know who he is. And that leaves an opportunity for his rivals to paint that picture for him. And they can do that like they did with Newt Gingrich and, and look at what's happened to his candidacy. So uh, I, I think what you'll hear from Rick Santorum is a lot of talk about how America is, uh, in his opinion, a deeply broken place. He feels that the last three years under the Obama administration have taken the country down the wrong path. And it, it, that's basically his general argument, is elect me and we will restore the country to its greatness. So quickly to sum up, Gwen, um, how do we look for New Hampshire to be different from what we saw in Iowa and just in the way these candidates are campaigning and getting their message out? Well, Judy, if you want to sum it up, this, listen to former governor, New Hampshire Governor John Sununu, former White House chief of staff some years ago. He came out today to introduce Mitt Romney and John McCain, and he said the same two words over and over again. He said, Mitt Romney is conservative and he's a leader. When he talks about his conservatism, it's a way of telling the, the people who might lean toward Rick Santorum not to get off the bus. And that when he says he's a leader, it's a way of turning the focus to President Obama, which is really all he wants to talk about. On that point, we will leave it. Uh, Gwen Eiffel and Jeremy Peters, and we'll be watching New Hampshire coverage all week. Thank you both.